Good evening and welcome to News Hour with me, Julian Koma. Coming up, Acting Chief Executive of FISA Millennium Challenge Corporation, Mahmoud Ba, commends President Biu and his government for their successful accomplishment of the MCC threshold. The Ministry of Energy presents a budget of over 144 billion leons for 2022, which far exceeds the 3.78 billion leons which had been drawn as a cut-off ceiling. On Safe Abortion Day, People's Alliance for Reproductive Health Advocacy makes another appeal to decriminalize abortion. And Rights to Access Information Commissioner Ibrahim Sigur Shaw says the country should reflect on its progress in relation to universal access to information. Now these and more stories lined up in this edition of News Hour, but first, our Corona preventive message. You see where them people are wear the mask they fine? Well, now so you self for wear your mask. Cover by you know send you much all them where you didn't near other person. The Minister of Energy, Alhaji Khan Jassisi, has said that his ministry was committed to rehabilitating the EGTC plant and the Dodo Idaho Power Dam, among other things, in 2022. He made the statement while submitting his ministry's 2022 budget to the Ministry of Finance. The Sierra Leone Postal Service and Sierra Leone Immigration Department were also heard in the proceedings. The SLBC's Victor Jones tells us more. But what about MPAs, paid MPAs? And they are budgeting for it year after year. They are, budget, they are refusing to pay, especially Elsa and Uma. That depict the atmosphere in the Ministry of Finance's conference room as the Ministry of Energy's 2022 budget was being heard. In response to the question, the Minister of Energy, Al Haji Kanjase, said. The Ministry of Energy presented a budget of over 144 billion billion. According to the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Energy, Tamba Rimon Betua, delays in the disbursement of funds and ineffective coordination with other MDAs are few of their challenges being faced. While addressing the Fiscal Risk Panel, the Managing Director, Sailing Postal Service, Brahma Kata, Tower Post had 38 outlets across the country, but only 24 of them were functional. He said the institution had a challenge with public confidence and support from stakeholders. The institution projected to make revenue of 6.2 billion leons in 2022 and requested a sum of 2.9 billion leons for sale. We've had discussions with uh, the commercial bank, Sierra Leone commercial bank, uh, to try and see how we can roll out against the bank. So against the bank can use the bank. So we know banks, it will actually cost them in terms of capital expenditure to build new branches. So what we are proposing is, they are already posted outlets across the country. So partner with us, and then we can provide basic financial services, banking services, cash in, cash out, at any postal location across the country. The Fiscal Risk Division panel picked out several inconsistencies in the institution's projections with regards to revenue generation. The panel advised Salpost to re-strategize and improve their services in order to be able to compete in the growing market and by extension make more revenue for the government. Meanwhile, according to the Chief Immigration Officer, Sierra Leone Immigration Department, Andrew Jayakaikai, the Immigration Department has only 254 staff and 200 volunteers. This is further heightened by the Department's incapability to man all the 800 porous spot points across the country, Mr. Kai Kai said. We are not fully equipped as individuals to manage the land here as new borders of this country, and that's the national security. I remember when I was in front of Parliament in 2018, I'm a newly appointed chief immigration officer. 
That's one of the things I told the parliamentarians. We are part of the national security architecture. We man the borders. Anybody, whether friend or foe, entering into trade on your very first point of contact is going to be immigration. Slade had produced over 63,000 passports in 2021. Senior Accountant, Sierra Leone Immigration Department, Abdul Bailo Kadun, said till date they had not received their budget allocation for 2021. Issues about border insecurity were quite prominent given that the Immigration Department has a critically low number of staff going into 2022. SLEED has budgeted over 9.6 billion leons as a financial projection. SLBC News, Victor Jones. Now, opponents of abortion believe that whether it is done professionally or otherwise, it involves the murder of an unborn baby. On the other hand, campaigners for the so-called safe abortion say that abortion was about protection of women and girls from death and lifetime complications. On Safe Abortion Day, which is observed on September 28th every year, the People's Alliance for Reproductive Health Advocacy, PORA, has made yet another appeal towards decriminalizing abortion and to make it safe and accessible. So Ibrahim reports. We call for immediate action to decriminalize abortion and make accessible comprehensive safe abortion care. All individuals who can, who can become pregnant and who seek medical abortion care, women and adolescent girls, should be provided with the necessary information to make an informed decision about their reproductive health, rights, bodies, and futures. Madam Ojong said the organization understood the strong opposition to abortion. This opposition, according to the People's Alliance for Reproductive Health Advocacy, borders along the restrictive legal environments, stigma, religious and traditional considerations. Opponents of the practice, for instance, believe that whether or not performed by a professional, abortion is still the deliberate murder of an unborn child. However, the civil society organization noted that the grim maternal mortality statistics coming from Sierra Leone meant that more attention be given to sexual and reproductive health services, including access to safe abortion and contraceptive services. We have countries where you don't talk about progressive sexuality addiction. They are banned. And uh, we have areas where there has been a reduction in uh, the number of service points for like family planning, wearing. This has affected a lot number of the women. And that has increased the number of unsafe coming men, unwanted pregnancies, unintended pregnancies which has subsequently led to an increase in safe abortions. Mr. Kamara told journalists that they have engaged stakeholders across the country on their campaign to decriminalize abortion, but he admitted that people still were divided over the issue. Nevertheless, with support from the Women's Global Network for Reproductive Rights and the Ministry of Health, the chairperson of the People's Alliance for Reproductive Health Advocacy was confident that they would have everyone on board. SLBZ News Hour, Sorry Brian reporting. The International Day for Universal Access to Information highlights the importance of expanding access to information laws and their implementation worldwide to bring strong institution for sustainable development and to uphold the vision of information as a public good. In commemoration of this day, the Right to Access Information Executive Secretary Mustafa Bremer says that the country should reflect on its progress in relation to universal access to information. Let's have a look. 
civil society offices, legal councils, and other private institutions we are all present at Family Kingdom to discuss how to build back better access to information. Suppositions were made that even though Sierra Leone is commemorating the Universal Information Day, the Rights to Access Information Commission is yet to implement laws that will prosecute institutions that blatantly refuse to give information and the Rights to Access Information should institute data protection. It's a shame for us as a country for even talking about right to access to information, we don't have a law that protects our data and privacy. So if you ask the government, if you take a matter to court, what law are you going to rely on? Like when we write to institutions asking for information, we put certain provisions for the right to access to information. And the good thing you need to know, you know, if we have all these laws, a lot of money will off the neck or the head of the anti-corruption commission. The executive director, Mustafa Brimer, said they still await parliament to ratify a law that regulates and prosecutes institutions that fail to provide information. Uh, as talking to legislator myself, um, it behoves, it is both fitting that every act passed in parliament should be accompanied with a very good regulation so that it makes the execution and implementation of the prescriptions of the Act very easy. On, on the side of the REIC, we have not attained that yet, but the, the regulation has been prepared, validated, and uh, we are just waiting on the Ministry of Information to be laid in Parliament. But it, uh, it's not going to be, actually, it's not going to deter us from moving ahead, because the Act also allows us to go ahead with some of these things. Even though the Right to Access Information Regulation is yet to be ratified, the Right to Access Information Act 2013 still firmly requires institutions to provide necessary information whenever they are required. SLBC News are Julian Kuruma. Rabies is a deadly virus that spread to people through infected animal bites, also dogs. For this reason, every year on September 28th, the world comes together to raise awareness about rabies and to commemorate the death of Louis Pasteur, a French scientist who created the rabies vaccine. The selected theme for this year's commemoration is to spread facts about this disease rather than fear. Let's have a look. Walking through Freetown, one can easily observe stray dogs roaming the streets, most of which have not been vaccinated and some carrying the deadly rabies disease. Dr. Gudush Jalo is a veterinarian. He explained the consequence of dogs not being vaccinated. If the, the dog has got to manifest a sign and symptom of rabies, it is die. Similarly, if a human being has got rabies, and he has started to manifest signs and symptoms of the virus, then he will slowly die. Uh, people who have recovered from rabies are very few, but after that they are not mentally well. So it's not a disease that you can really treat, you can only prevent. Even though when dogs just bite, you can say treatment, you can go to for treatment, but really still preventing the virus from getting to the head. According to Center for Disease Control, more than 59,000 people around the world die of rabies each year because rabid dogs roam the streets and bite people who cannot get the care they need. The Freedom City Council is responsible to remove stray dogs from the street. In terms of the heart, as far as we can to concern, we have our virus widened and hunted from 2010 up to this moment. And as truly hard, we are not technically inclined. In terms of putting dogs to sleep, really, it's a little place. But as I'm, as I'm saying to you now, we are on a plan on that particular issue. But first, you have a secondary for primary, secondary, and the tertiary. 
procedure. And in terms of what you do, this dog, you look at the condition of the dog, you look at the status of the dog as well. So in that case, the Animal Welfare Department at Freetown City Council is hopeful that they would get the funds needed to execute their plans to rid the streets of Freetown from stray dogs. SLBC News are Julian Koroma. Citizens must have seen a video making rounds on social media depicting a police officer fighting a civilian in Freetown. This scene has prompted public debate and mixed feelings. But the police spokesman, Assistant Commissioner of Police, Brahma Kamara, in a telephone conversation said the police were investigating the matter before making any public pronouncement. Ibrahim Samura takes up the story. It looks funny, comic, but somehow disturbing, coupled with the question of professionalism. This scene was just one among many scenes wherein police officers, especially those attached to the traffic section, are in confrontation with civilian, but mostly common with commercial drivers. The video depicts the officer and the civilian wrestling with accusation and counter accusations. This act has created a forum for discussions among those that have watched the video. This is disgraceful. The police should have reported the matter to the station. Drivers are molested every day by the police. I condemn the act. If the man did something wrong, he should have been arrested instead. The police have no right to slap the man. He should have also respect the law. I am a driver, but I will not take it from any police officer. These concerns from the public have caught the eyes of the Independent Police Complaint Board. It was established some seven years ago by government to investigate complaints against senior police officers by the public. Section 3, 1 and 2 of the IPC regulation give us the mandate to, one, uh, investigate police officers who uh, discharge firearm, uh, use of excessive force, um, death in police custody, um, allegations of misconduct against senior police officers from the rank of uh, superintendent or higher. Um, we also have the mandate to, I'm sorry, the Inspector General of Police has the mandate to refer cases to us that hint is fall under the mandate of the Independent Police Complaint Board. Um, we also look into an action or inaction of a police officer. For example, something is happening here. There is a police officer at the scene and that officer decides not to take any action. We are mandated to investigate such a matter. He said the board has mounted an investigation first to ascertain the scene of the crime. We don't want to judge from this point of view, but as you asked, um, we normally look into uh, um, in cases like that. When I spoke to the investigations, um, the complaint and investigation department yesterday, I was told that uh, they were still trying to ascertain the location of the incident, and then after getting the location of the incident, then they will now be able to track um, the officer involved. The board, with support from UNDP, Mr. Sisi Wenton, has just concluded training for police officers on professional standards. The video has really caught the eyes of the Independent Complaints Board, and at present they are investigating 372 cases which they receive from the public. On the video, the board said they are presently instituting an investigation to ascertain first the location and before taking any other investigations. Following a number of engagements with political parties to outline challenges limiting women's participation in politics, 
The National Democratic Institute with the Political Party Registration Commission has finalized its action plan to seek to give women more space in the political arena in Sierra Leone. Aminata Fofana was at the session in Freetown in our report. It is no doubt that women have been going through numerous challenges in their quest to gain recognition within political parties and even at national level. This has hindered many of them to fully participate in the political landscape of Sierra Leone. Hence, the move to have a platform that had given political parties and other players to chat way forward on the National Inclusion Action Plan that provide guidelines for behaviors of the male counterparts within political parties and Institute Mohamed Kone has started to be necessary. We also had a conversation where we started around how can we as a nation, especially you political party leaders, work together to address the issue of women inclusivity and participation. That is the more reasons I would really appreciate after break to see you seated cross party lines. You don't want to see uh, a, a representative from one political party just seated on it. He urged them to practice all that entails in the action plan for women to get more sensitive political positions. And Political Parties Registration Commission boss Abulai Bangura registered the Commission's commitments to such developments. We are proposing that political parties should not only provide at least 30 percent nomination for women for all national elections, but we are also proposing that we want to see if political parties can have at least 30 percent women in all executives of the party leaders. This same response was shared by political parties by pledging their commitment to create a smooth political landscape for women. We pro provide finance and resources for capacity building. Also that we know the doors where we are going to knock, the knock at the doors to get these finances, resources to help our women to make to, to go through. We are watching the national policy very closely on but meanwhile, in our constitution, we have made it mandatory that any flag bearer aspirant who happens to become president of the Republic of Sierra Leone under the APC party, it's a must that in all appointments, minimum, you should have 30% women representation. Meet with women, win with women is very, very much important because men has been winning all along. So India is now craving the indulgence of men that they need to win with women. That's the WWW. The National Inclusive Action Plan will be later popularized across the country for public consumption. SLBC News, Aminata Fofana. There have been rumors on social media and public sentiments that a possible increase of pump price is imminent as a result of refusal of some gas stations to sell fuel. SLBC's Emmanuel Samoa went out and investigated the possible reasons for the refusal of pump stations to sell fuel. And here is the report. It was a mixed plain site of gas stations in the east and west part of the city, with some selling fuel and others were not. Those with fuel had cars that came in and out to be refilled, while pumps without fuel were not closed but had signs saying fuel was unavailable. There were no usual queues or fleets of cars in any of the gas stations without fuel. The pump prices of petrol and diesel remained unchanged. Managers in pump stations without fuel off camera showed SLBC their fuel tanks, which were below the threshold for sale or commercial purposes. But the managers also disclosed that they made requests for supply but they were yet to be supplied. The delay in the supply of fuel, they said, was as a result of technical fault that occurred during last week's heavy thunderstorm. 
to verify the statement of gas station managers. SLBC went down to the field terminal. Upon arrival, the environment was empty with a trail of fuel tankers. We caught up with one of the NP staff at the terminal who off camera verified the statement of the managers adding that NP terminal was currently under maintenance as we are about to take the NP loading system to digital. He added that since they commenced work in the NP terminal, they have been utilizing Leon Oil Terminal for loading fuel tankers because they have a fully electronic loading system. Going to Leon Oil Terminal at Texaco in the east end part of the city, the entrance alone speaks volume of how busy the terminal was. But the management refused to speak to SLBC to confirm the fault. What was clear was that there were no sign of fear shortage and any sign, comment or side talks from dealers that there would be increase in pumpers. But what was unclear was when the current technical issue will be resolved. Emmanuel Samoa, SLBC Freetown. To expose the impact of masculinity and femininity norms on the lives of men and women and to also identify ways in which these aspects of gender affect women's political participation, the European Union, in partnership with the government, has conducted training for the Gender Committee and Female Caucus of Parliament on building partnership on the Gender Empowerment Bill. Emmanuel Samura witnessed the opening. The song was of women in their anthem of gender equality. 30% representation is what they are calling for in the newly drafted Gender Empowerment Bill. They are currently being trained on how they could build partnership with their male counterparts in Parliament for such a bill to become law. All the stakeholders in Parliament and outside Parliament so that the noble goal of bringing development through a shared empowerment space in the gender bill, which is a framework to allow every, every citizen of Sierra Leone to benefit as well as to contribute to the process. The chairperson of the female caucus of parliament, Honorable Veronica Kadisi, said it has long been misconstrued that gender issues only deal with women alone, thus providing the reason they want to bring men on board to understand that gender issues affect both sexes. The bill, she added, will soon hit the well of parliament for hot debate, which is why they are calling on their male counterparts to join them in the enactment of the gender empowerment bill. We appreciate the men. We cannot do it alone. In as much as we are yearning for this thirty percent, we cannot do it without your support. I believe that is why we are here today. We should be seen side by side. We are their mistakes. We correct it. We are their orders. You help us to skip these orders. Presenting on gender and politics, Honorable Isa Takabia said, it is not biological for people to become masculine and feminine. Rather, people learn how to be feminine and masculine based on social and cultural differences. From the presentations, Member of Parliament of Constituency 028, Honorable Sir Charles, was moved to have exposed some of the undue advantages men have over women. You go to certain parts of the East and the North, for instance, even though we have women who have no right to citizens, but they are not given that right. The society itself has given us undue advantage over women. You see, the women themselves looking at themselves as being inferior to me. The training is part of the European Union's support to the governance sector in Ceylon. Emmanuel Samoa, SLBC Freetown.
Nursery schools are now formally part of government and government-assisted schools for the first time in Sierra Leone. This effecti effectively means that they are also part of the free quality education program. Early childhood development centers, as they are called, can be found now even in some of the most distant villages in the country. As Suri Ibrahim reports, the Ministry of Basic and Senior Secondary Education has embarked on a massive training of educators and mother support groups for these centers. The training of early childhood development centers or ECDs educators and mother support groups aims to achieve three basic things according to Lois Maha, ECD facilitator and advocate who is in charge of training the educators at Sirabu in the heart of Pujon district. First is to get our educators actually set up the different learning areas, the six plus one writing learning areas. That's what we want to get to do. And know exactly what type of play materials, toys that whether local or that which is imported. They know exactly which material goes where, which material goes into a particular learning area. She is one of short personnel deployed from Freetown to facilitate the trainings of nearly 40 educators and MSGs in the 19 ECD centers in Pujon District. They can be found in Bomusamba, Salima Samba, Mandima and Dandabu, among others. The exercise is meant to introduce or re-emphasize to educators the skills and attitudes suitable to teach the prescribed ages of children for these centers. The centers cater for ages 0 to 2 and 3 to 5. The educators are required to introduce the children to critical thinking, writing and reading skills, color identification and even some domestic chores. The training has made us improved on several things like setting the classrooms, daily schedule and circle time. More time has now been allocated to circle sessions than other activities. Teaching a nursery school can sometimes be challenging and sometimes exciting. As a mother myself, I am used to dealing with children. Most of what we do here is to encourage and develop the children. Any two they do phobia and talk to the encouraging because we are them develop School activities are organized into indoor and outdoor activities. Mrs. Rogers said parents were initially unwilling to send their children, thinking that it was a burden on them. But as it is now, the centers are fully packed with 25 or 30 children in each center. We are happy that government has started nursery schools for our young children. I am told that we don't have to pay any fee except preparing food for our kids. From now on, I only need to prepare my child and take her to school in the morning and go to work in my farm. Perhaps this is the first time early childhood development centers or nursery schools are forming part of the public schools in Sierra Leone. It also comes after the development of the first policy for early childhood by the Ministry of Basic and Senior Secondary Education. SLBZ News Hour, Sori Brian reporting. You are still on SWC's News Hour with me, Julian Karuma. Still to come, nine persons faced in months imprisonment, each for pelting stones, bottles and other weapons at a Miller Group of Companies compound. And Albinism Royal Foundation Children's Support, living with Albinism with sunglasses and school materials in Moyamba. Now these and more stories coming up soon. Let's go for a short break. Welcome back to News Up with me, Julian Karuma. Magistrate Adil Dabo 
of Ross Road Court Number 3 has sentenced nine persons to seven months imprisonment each and ordered them to pay a total fine of 27 million leums after they pleaded guilty of throwing stones, bottles and other weapons at Miller Group of Company Compound on Monday, 28th September 2021. After delivering his verdict, Magistrate Dabo condemned the act committed by the convict and said his sentence must serve as a deterrent and warning to others that violence should be minimized, if not put to an end. Aminash Brahma, report. It was a sad day for relatives and friends of the convicts as they shed tears upon hearing the judgment handed down by the presiding magistrate Hadi Rudabo that the convicts should serve a jail term of seven months including a fine of three million each. This didn't go down well with the convicts and their family members as normally people who are convicted on public offenses such as righteous conduct we are sentenced to pay a fine or serve a jail term but in this case it was both. The convicts, Mustafa Lamin, Ibrahim Conte, Said Thonta, Abdul Karim Mansare, Abbas Sise, Abu Bakar Kamara, Lamin Kanu, and Jawa Conte were convicted on count one and three of riotous conduct and throwing missiles. While on count two of disorderly behavior, they were acquitted and discharged. As according to Magistrate Hadru Dabo, it was bad in law. Immediately after sentencing the convicts, Magistrate Hadru Dabo said lawlessness has become the order of the day, condemned all forms of violence and said there should be a stop to lawlessness in the country, adding that this sentence is to serve as deterrent and warning to others that his court does not tolerate such. Criminality in the form of violently harassing well-meaning citizens must be discouraged and the court must seen and trusted in deterring criminality in form of righteous conduct in the country, Magistrate Hadru Dabo said. He further stated there should be tranquility in the society and citizens, especially the youth, should maintain the peace and harmony. Prior to the sentence, defense counsel Madio Sise in his plea mitigation pleaded with the bench to pardon the convict who he said did not waste the court time by pleading guilty. He added, the convict have darkened the walls of the male correctional center and have been reformed and begged him to give them a maximum sentence considering their financial status and the 14 days they have spent in prison. While the associating counsel, Hindolo Givao, craved for justice to be done in the matter. It could be recalled that earlier on, some workers of Miller Group were allegedly caught stealing onions from supply bags of onion belonging to customers and were charged to court after being arrested on the scene by the police. This caused some colleague workers and others to go on the rampage, demanding that the company release those who were accused of stealing. SLBC News Aminash Braima. Albinism Royal Foundation Children has supported children living with albinism with sunglasses and school materials in Moyamba district. The move aims to ameliorate the social needs of the children on the Send a Child with Albinism to School project. Soiba Samura tells us more from our district. According to the Executive Director of Albinism Royal Foundation, Pastor Sarah Gaiwa, the support is born out of a visibility research by the foundation to its members in Moyamba. A discovery was made that most of the children living with albinism in Moyamba were at risk of contracting skin cancer and related ailments common with albinism. The purpose of coming here is to give them their school kits for the 2021-2022 academic year. That which entails school bags, um, uniform, books, some skin soap, glasses, and, 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 and all of those things that will pertain them to stay in school. Mrs. Gaiwa Haiwa believes that no support is too small to the direction of education, especially for vulnerable groups like children with albinism in the country. Stakeholders in Moyamba, including the Ministry of Social Welfare and Civil Society, all lauded Albinism Royal Foundation for the gesture. Reporting from Bo, I am Suriba Samura. 
Now for some stories making the news in Africa. Nigerian government say it has suspended the passport of more than 2,000 Nigerian accused of violating COVID-19 prevention protocol after returning from abroad. Dr. Mukhtar Mahmoud, who sits on the President's COVID committee, said that the passport would remain suspended for a year. As the country anticipates a third wave of infections, Nigeria prepares to have strengthen its surveillance system at the airport, seaport, and land borders. Attention is now focused on travelers, especially those arriving from what are seen as Irish country who might strike and evade isolation orders. Opposition MPs in Uganda have walked out of parliament after the Prime Minister and Attorney General failed to give a satisfactory answer over the whereabout of two legislators. The lawmakers, Mohamed Siriwangini and Alain Siriwangana, both members of Bobby Wayne's National Unity Platform Party, were recently released on bail after being charged with murder relating to attacks in the country's central region. But they were detained immediately after leaving prison. On Monday evening, Mr. Siwangini said out of his lawyer, Mr. Siwangini was pulled out of his lawyer's car outside Kigo prison by armed security personnel dressed in black and driven off in an unmarked Toyota IS van. Police say he is not facing charges. The World Health Organization say it is horrified by the finding of an inquiry into allegation of sexual abuse by staff working in the Democratic Republic of Congo during an Ebola outbreak. The allegation came to light a year ago following an investigation by the new humanitarian news agency and the Thomas Ruter Foundation. Local women allegedly piled with drinks, ambushed in hospital, forced to have sex, and to become pregnant. WHO Regional Director for Africa, Medishu Mufara, to the women and girls who had suffered between 2018 and 2020 because of the actions of the agency staff and other health workers. In independent investigators cited structural failures and individual negligence in their report. WHO Director General Tedros Amengeros said the report made for harrowing reading. He apologized, adding that the box talked with him and promised support, protection, and justice for the victims. That concludes our capture of news making rounds around Africa. Let's now go over to our entertainment desk for the latest update. Welcome to the entertainment news segment with me, Maria Tudukuri. Kariato Mariama Bangura and Musugoli are two beautiful Sierra Leonean deaf ladies who have been given the opportunity to represent the green, white, and blue for the first time on the Mr. and Miss Deaf Africa Contest 2021. And they are currently on their way to the host country, which is Tanzania. The National Commission for Persons with Disability presented a check of 30 million news to the Deaf Association Women Network Sierra Leone to enable and facilitate their participation as Sierra Leone debuts in this year's Mr. and Miss Deaf Africa competition. Let's take a look as Jonathan Turner reports. This is the first time Sierra Leone is going to participate in an international deaf competition. Participants Kadiatu Mayama Bangua and Musu Goli will challenge with other African countries' representatives in a battle to become master and miss deaf Africa contest 2021 in Tanzania. According to the chairman of the National Commission for Persons with Disability, James Tyro Collins, the assistance is part of the commission's direct support to disabled organizations and revealed that the group will be representing Ceylon in the inaugural events. Providing you with 30 million leons 
for you to participate in the competition. We pray for you to return safe and sound and to bring loyals for the commission as well as for the government. I thank you and I present it to you with love. 30 million lions was for a round trip ticket to Tanzania for two contestants and a sign language interpreter. Kadia Tumaya Mabangua and Musugoli said the benevolent act of the commission will not be forgotten easily as they were grateful for this opportunity to represent Sierra Leone and showcase their God-given talents at the event. They thanked the management and staff of the commission and by extension the government of Sierra Leone for reposing confidence in them and promised to come home with loyalists. The Master and Miss Deaf Africa Contest 2021 in Tanzania event is for young people with speech and hearing impairments between the ages of 18 to 35. The contest will commence in October this year in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. For SLBC News, Jonathan Tonner reporting. We are rooting for you, Kadiato and Musu. Good luck. Moving on from pageants now to reality TV show, the biggest, most exciting and fun-filled reality television show, The Big Sister Show Season 3, which is the best season, is getting people on their toes and on the edge of their seats, actually waiting for it to start and to know what's happening. What we can tell you right now is that, get ready, because this season is going to be full of suspense. Now, the auditions have been done and pretty soon they will be aired on SLBC Channel 2 after the recaps. Remember, this is the bestest season, meaning the selected contestants will bring in someone of their choosing into the house with them. It doesn't matter the gender as long as they are over 18 years of age. So because of that, the contestants that would be selected would be few in number. But next month, the show will kick off and the game for the ultimate $50,000 would begin. My bestie is bright. When I'm in trouble, she rushes in to help. We don't act. She's most times always right. Even when I'm faced with a difficult situation, she's always there to redress that certain blight. Our longest serving Miss Universe Sierra Leone, Marie Esther Bangor, is celebrating her birthday today and she is looking pretty and fabulous as always. Marie competed for the Miss Universe Sierra Leone in 2018 and won. She went to Thailand that year to participate on the Miss Universe competition, but due to some unforeseen circumstances, she arrived late for the competition and couldn't participate. But in 2019, she was given the chance to go and she went to the United States of America where she competed with over 80 countries from around the world. Till date, she is still the reigning Miss Universe Sierra Leone because there hasn't been another national competition yet for her to pass on the crown. She currently lives in the United Kingdom where she is schooling. Happy birthday, Mary Esther Bangura. We wish you all the best. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Mai Esther Bangura, Miss Universe Radio 2019. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have for this segment today. Thanks for joining me. I am Maria Tudukwe and keep watching PSLBC. And now for the latest in sport, let's go over to our sport desk. Thank you so much. We begin with an adage which says, what a man can do, a woman can do it better. Now, the sporting sector in Sierra Leone has been widely viewed as a male-dominated environment, despite the countless attempts made by women to be on equal footing with their male counterparts. But what do the movers and shakers in the sporting sector make of what the challenges women are faced with? SLBC Sport finds out more. Giving women and girls more opportunities for sports participation clearly opens up the space to see the emergency 
of young and exciting prospects in every sporting discipline. In Sierra Leone, the participation of women in sport has been minimal, considering the lack of radical inclusion, among other things. Chances for them to lead as presidents of associations and federations are few and far between. However, the recent triumph by the country's female on the 20 side against Guinea exhibits the level of commitment visibly demonstrated by women themselves. At present, the International Olympic Committee is encouraging NOCs around the world to take the inclusion of women in sports very seriously. I appeal to all the NOCs and CGA to all women in their operations. So therefore, we are part of all that for the association to be able to involve women and ladies. In a response, Commissioner Pamela Williams from the Women and Sports Commission Sierra Leone pointed out the strides they are making to attract women in sports. We are still beefing it up to the schools and other businesses, even in some of the marketplaces, they go and tell them the essence of participating in sports. Why is it necessary in selling the markets? It is understood that adequate funding can do the trick in helping more women in sport break into the mainstream and also gain bigger representation. For SLBC Sport, Abdul Kabir. Now in the international sea, we bring you good news in the Champions League. Liverpool maintained first place in their Champions League group on Tuesday evening after a convincing 5 1 win at FC Porto away. It was quite a show from the African stars. Mo Salah and that of Sadimani who were on the score sheet for Liverpool. Famino as well. It was an excellent display from the Reds as they are open to maintain that unbeaten run. In fact, they've met with FC Porto on a couple of times and they've maintained that unbeaten away record. Liverpool seems to be one of the forces to reckon with in the English Premier League. Away from that, we take PSG as they had an exciting win against the English Premier League champions, Manchester City. We saw Lionel Messi with a very first goal for PSG, which was truly really a beauty. It was absolutely a delight for Lionel Messi, and he's open to score more goals. And he's one of the top goal scorers in the Champions League with a remarkable feat to echo it. Among all the other players, it was truly Truly a beautiful performance from Lionel Messi and the rest of the other players who played against Man City. Well, on that note, we end this edition of Sports of the Story Close. I'm Abdul Kabir. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks to Abdul Kabir, SLBC's very own sport correspondent. Now, as we draw the curtain on this edition of News Hour, let's have a quick listen to the main headlines again. Acting Chief Executive Officer Millennium Challenge Corporation, Mahmoud Ba, commends President Yohannes' government for their successful accomplishment of the MC threshold. He made this proclamation during a meeting with the MCC in Washington, D.C., as Sierra Leone has been eligible for the MCC compact. The Ministry of Energy has presented a budget of over 114 billion leons, which far exceed the 3.78 billion leons which had been drawn as a court of ceiling. According to the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Ed Energy, Tamba Raymond Batua, delays in the disbursement of funds and ineffective coordination with the MDAs are few of their challenges being faced. On Safe Abortion Day, People's Alliance for Reproductive Health Advocacy has made another appeal to decriminalize abortion. And a right to access information executive secretary Mustafa Bremer has said the country should reflect on its progress in relation to universal access to information. Wonderful to 
have the SOBC News. Uh, I've been your presenter, Julian Kuruma. Do have a wonderful night. Good night. Get into the groove this week.